Yeah, I don't, I'm gonna eat till noon. Oh, that's cool. Okay, you ready, guy? Ready, dog. Okay, 10 o'clock. With flowers. Recording? For it. All right, bro. I'm here with Kai. Kai Pacaro. Um, I. Now you have the Falcon, the Filipino Falcon. Um, I grew up knowing Kai. Kai was kind of a legend. I never really um, got to know him really well until we started foiling, but he was a local legend in all the surf lineups. He was riding all kind of alternative crafts, alaya boards, just beautiful, you know, twin fins and fishes and stuff, and just just pure style guy. Um, and I think one year it was Waikiki. We'll, get, we'll let you get into the origin story, but I remember... Um, they had a surf contest and that you were basically one of the first guys on Oahu, not in Hawaii, because it was happening at different times. Maui was really early. And then I think the next wave of foilers was uh, on Oahu. But you were like one of the guys. And I remember watching him like, like Kai's getting into it, you know. And um, and then you were like lead foiler for a while with you and Scotty and Jack and it was wild time. I got into it a little bit later. There was a Dalwit together, and that's where we got to know each other really, really well. Now we're about us, but um, yeah, what about what's your, what's your order? Sorry, let's, let's recap it before we get into downwinding and all sorts of other things we got up ahead. So, surfing origin story when I was like 16, um, I borrowed a friend's like 11 foot tanker, and I would sneak out and Longboard Castle is from Kailua. And um, that really was my, my hook, line, and sinker. All, before that, I just boogie boarded. Little short break, boogie board walls and tongs and whatnot because my parents took us to the Alps. Um, but once I stood up, I was like, wait, this is way more fun. Mm-hmm. And then that tr- that just progressed, and I longboarded a lot through high school. So, mm-hmm. Bro, it's actually fascinating because there's so much high-level bodyboarders that have, like, transitioned into foiling, right? Yeah. Could be could Drummond, Paul Cooper, Kyle Maligro. Yeah. I mean, all those guys. That's Anson, Raquelio. All these guys were on old, like, bodyboarding DVDs, you know? Yeah. And then now they're foilers, and they're yeah. killing it. Yeah. They're next level. Like, yeah. I was just a kid, <laughs> yeah. like, doing the weakest El Romo's ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giant claims. Yeah. Uh, but from there. Because it was all just like beach breaks. So I learned to shortboard in my like uh, 18, 19, and then just was hooked after that. And uh, at that point, I had transitioned. I, I would at that point call myself a surfer like did every day. Yep. Fully hooked. Um, I've traveled the world surfing. I did like almost two years straight just traveling. Um, and just to go, everybody thinks about the endless summer, right? Like we watch this movie, The Endless Summer. I call it in reality. It's the endless winter. Like, we're constantly looking for the winter, going from southern heavy, northern heavy. Um, That's what we did. And I think, in in a sense, that's what they were doing at Endless Summer, too. Um, But the lifestyle, that's like an endless summer. So, offshore investments. Offshore investments. Chasing it. So, from there, I was given an Elias surfboard made out of plywood. And... uh, I loved that thing, and I was surfing it all over the world, and I got to Jeffrey. Gutted. But coincidentally, the person that was I was living next to had just ordered 10 black Sporodia, and they said, like, hey, do you know how to shape these things? And I'm, like, one of those, like, I'm going to fake it till I make it, you hype guys. And uh, well, you become president that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Um, I just was like, yeah, I could do that. And I went to the second hand shop, bought a, bought a jigsaw, bought a sander, and I shaped up a bunch of the boards. And for me shaping the boards, he gave me one. Um, and, uh, I stayed in Jeffrey's Bay for like three months and then surf supers and, uh, the point and just fell in love with Elias surfing. And that was what also allowed me to get the credibility for when I took my shortboard out to get waves so the locals were like oh right out guy come come you can sit over here you know so like i that was like a really cool tool to get amazing waves with the but then also 
went on shortboarding yeah. too. Yeah. Um, and then I've always ridden fishes. Like I think that was from my longboarding, like leading into to surfing. There's a shaver named Jeff McCallum out of California that was like a good friend of mine. He makes the sickish fishes. And trained other Christians say. Um, so I was very much into fishes. So writing all these alternative crafts then led me to the foil. Um, I was on a trip in the Maldives and uh, Zane Schweitzer had like the first like Kai foil, right? The gold foil. And what year was this? It sort of been like 2000 and like 16, 2017. Early yeah. on. Yeah. Yeah. Very early. And he's the nicest guy, right? Like he's letting us all try it behind the boat. And when I tried it, I don't know if it was if it was for real or whatnot, but he said, dude, I've never seen anybody pick that up that quickly. Like you should get yourself a foil. Bodyboarding and the alternative crafts, huh? That's just and snowboarding. But we're like, yeah. I, like I, I used to teach snowboarding mm-hmm. and I fucking love snowboarding. Um so just being diverse in all these different crafts made it super easy to ride foil. Um, and so when I came home, I got a foil, I got, uh, um, uh, one of those, one of those, uh, Kai foil. I actually was forced into buy it. Cause he, remember Laleo? Mm-hmm. He was like the OG guy. Yeah. 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 Um, I was like, Hey Laleo, can I try your foil? I, I kind of want to get one. And we, I, I would try this fo- his foil. Um, but then I let my buddy try it and on the first wave, he broke Laleo's board in half and Laleo was like, the coolest like he was like hey don't worry about it just buy a foil for me and we'll call it even and i was like what a good trade and i was like bro like i i don't got that kind of money but my but the guy that broke it did right so i'm like hey bro he broke his board like he's like if you buy a foil then we don't gotta like fix his board yeah um so i was like i'll split it with you and so i split the foil with with my buddy and is he still foil? No, he doesn't. He he can. He has one under his in his garage, but he rarely ever does it. Just doesn't. It literally like, grab him like it grabbed me. Um, but the funny thing it was like, I would have it for like four days. He'd have it for three days, back and forth. But quickly it became to like I had it for like six days, and he had it for one day. And it slowly got to a point where like he was like, ah, just what whatever. And then Scotty, right? Like so I. I foil wizard Scotty. Foil wizard. This is before he was the foil wizard, right? Like he was just like my go to guy that I would shortboard with. Like I mm-hmm. I surf with him like Bro, he was actually a bodyboarder too, you know. Yeah. The uh, when I started seeing Scotty out at graveyards and like suicides, he was yeah. like that learning how to surf. And he was he just had graduated from bodyboarding. So it's I don't know what it is with that bodyboard connection. Yeah. But making some of the best foilers, you know. So he he was like my my surf buddy, mm. and we we surfed everywhere together. We we were just in, inseparable when it came to surfing. Yeah, um, he wanted to give the foil a go, mm-hmm. and everybody thought I split the foil with him because whenever I wasn't using it, he was using it. Um, so Scotty got hooked really really hard in the beginning, um, and we just we just took that like constant like competition in a sense like who can get better who can pump out who can catch two for one who can do a turn who can hit the fall um and that really pushed our our boiling and like there was like maybe five foilers at, at that point um and that was like that that was the origin story of how i got into foiling and then from there it was okay i'm gonna get a cloud nine and i gave my one i i more or less um gave my buddy money to like get out of the go foil and then I bought the the Cloud Nine. Or did that is that how it worked? I think I just gave so, right? You would have had to pay me. Mm-hmm. But anyways, got rid of the GoFoil, got a Cloud Nine, fell in love with the Cloud Nine. At the time it was so sick. We thought we were like so revolutionary where we took the tail and we moved it forward. Um that was that was huge. That was because uh, of Blaine. I think Blaine Chambers figured that one out. And Kekoa. Um Kekoa we, we more and more, yeah. Um, and then from there I was in Fiji and the guys at Tabarua were riding all Armstrong and I was like, can I try that? They're like, hi, if you try this, you're going to buy one immediately. Yeah. Why not? And I was like, no, there's no way. Like I like you, my cloud night's sick. Surf's so good. 
And they're like, okay. They whipped me into one on their Armstrong, and, and I, I immediately just like, I I bought the Armstrong <laughs> from from the guy that like all this knob ruin. Um, and then after that, it was like Armstrong all the way, and the Takuma came around. Scotty was got sent a couple free Takuma setups, and it, he was like, dude, this is the one. And I tried it. I was like, holy shit, this is the one. It was funny. It's like a little B roll story of that. I remember when the Takuma came out, there was only like this. I remember Scotty was so prestigious at the time, and there was an Instagram clip of it might have been the designer of the LOL foil, the Takuma. And we have never seen anything like it, but he was cranking turns on a downwind run. And then I, I remember Scotty's like, whoa, like send me one. But like Scotty, like I said, he was already foil legend. Yeah. Boom, they sent him one. He was the only one that had one in Hawaii. And, like, we would see him rip on it, and it was, like, revolutionary because everyone was, like, all fascinated with the Kujira, like, um, what, are, what is it called? The Turbo Kill. Turbo Kill. Turbo Kill. But, um, to, as you, I remember, he was the only one that had it, and, like, some, and then after, we're all, he'd, like, I think Jack wanted one, I wanted, we were going to blow it up at Hawaii. But they just didn't, they ghosted all of us. They, like, I think it was funny because, like, even uh, Kai Lenny, like, had reached out to him yeah. and, like, wanted one. And they're like, yeah, just hit up Kai, yeah. <laughs> you know? And so, like, it was just wild because they're like, bro, Kai Lenny is asking for a foil. You give him one because he's, like, basically yeah, the modern. The what? The modern. He's, like, the modern duke for foiling. Yeah, for all of us. Yeah. yeah. You know? the, the whole Takuma relationship with riders is is is, i don't even understand so this (laughs) but it was day it was magic because like for a while only you and scotty were the ones that had it and it was beautiful to see you guys yeah shred you know and then you know we got into down so when did what did you start downwinding on so i started i started downwinding on the 1550 armstrong and i couldn't make it past um I couldn't make it past Cliff that House. Yeah. The downwinding story was, remember, you guys were all downwinding, and I was winging. And you guys would come by, and I'd be at matchings, like, fucking getting huge air. I was like, <laughs> like, I was like this is sick. It's like snowboarding. You're like, you wanted kickers, and fun. we would launch. But then I kept breaking boards, or the foil would fall off the fucking board, or my ankles were starting to swell. So, you know, and I was like, bro, I don't know how sustainable your race is. And, I, and Scotty was like, dude, you're blowing it. You need to be fucking downwinding. And I was like, bro, you're blowing air. Like, I'm fucking, like, 30 feet in the air. <laughs> and and I was like, okay, let's have a deal. You come wing with me for a day, and I'll come and downwind with you for a day. And so I took him and Adam to Kailua, and they had absolute shockers. Like, winging is so freaking hard. hard. You know, so hard. Um, and then I was like, okay, it's fair, right? I'm going to come down with you guys. And I took the 1550 out and I actually had a really good time. I was like, wow, this is cool. And now I have a goal. Like I made it to here. I want to try to make it further. Uh, and then the next time they gave me the lift 170 and I was like sick. And I made it almost all the way. And I'm like, all right. And then the third time we made it all the way. I'm like, okay, this is this is legit. It's like, boring. it's like snowboarding. Open ocean. And my, hey. I wasn't getting so broken as I was winging. Um, so once I learned how to downwind, I really never winged to get. Um, I, I honestly like have winged twice in that what it's been like four years, five years almost now. That one. So I don't know. It's that's the that's that's the origin story of of where I am with foiling out. It, it's cool because like. Obviously, maybe we're biased because we're uh, enthusiasts for downwinding, but I almost see all disciplines or roads of foiling leading to downwinding. Yeah. If you get into foil, surfing, and proning, you're like, maybe I'll try and downwind one day. If you get into winging, you'd be like, ah, maybe I'll try and ditch the wing and see if I could do it without it. If you get into supping, of course, you know, you can transition this into supping, but for me, I love it because it's like the, not bragging, but it's like the pinnacle of the sport. Yeah, it's like you know, it's like the apex, or it's the one thing that fills the void, like 
for me, it's like, how can I spend as much time in the ocean as possible? Like that, that's what roots me as a human. It's like being in the ocean and uh, riding energy with an ocean. It like charges you up or just gives you that feeling. Like the ultimate for me is swimming, yeah. right? Like shoreboarding, being able to get barrel, that's it. Or like it's back in the lip that, you know, surfing a point break, like that's the ultimate, but you, you only get to do that so many days out of the year. The rest of the year is filled with sloppy days, windy days, or days that are fat, the tide's too high. And that's where foiling fit in. It fit in all the gaps. But then it was like, oh shit, you know, the, the surface absolutely flat. Wind is nuking. Well, winging allowed you to at least mow the lawn. Um, <laughs> and then when, when Dowling came in, it was like, wait, now I can surf in the wide open ocean. Yeah. And, but every every day now has a way for you to be on the ocean thanks to the Alpha. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's amazing. We loved it. Um especially when we're doing all those Keiko's runs. I just reflect back, you know, every once in a while and just realize how special that was when there was just four or five guys yeah. on the 18 eight, chat. 18 voyagers. And, um, <laughs> you know, just how stoked they're frothing we were. Yeah. To just, you know, like learn, grow. They yeah, hold the tutorial. They did tutorials. And <laughs> that tutorial has so many views all around. And they, so many people are like, that that video really, like, got me into it. Yeah, Thank you. you. So it, it was cool because I think there were... Like, from that moment, and um, it's kind of kind of like iron us out such a way for us to share our knowledge, yeah. right? Like, you know, we would be sending Keiko's rounds on Armstrong 1550s or like, yeah. you know, I started downwinding on a lift 250, sir. Yeah. You know? And so your technique and your mechanics have to be just that much more precise, Yeah, you know? Try to learn how to SUP on a six O board with eighty liters, thinking like I want, I want, I want it to be sixteen liters because like I don't want to like ride this thing and yeah. to pump eighty liters around. Yeah. So we were going backwards. We had no idea what direction we were going. Yeah, but it was all necessary, yeah. and it all has like projected us into a place where you know, like now it's like something to look forward to where we could share with people. Yeah, I think for me. Um, it was cool, like, my whole vision with Voyager, like, it was just, it was, it's more of a community thing. Um, that special feeling was, you know, like, calling up the boys and texting and frothing to go on Keiko's runs, trying to be the first one to catch a wave and get out, laughing at your buddy, you see him now here? You know, just all that, that's, to me, like, that relationship we all had with each other the stoke the community for me that was all voyager yeah but it was, it was weird like i think i made like i made the first batch of hats yeah. pictures and hats yeah and to me like my whole goal is like i don't want to make merch i just like it would be cool to like just still you know, see see the boy just wearing and then it, it somehow just became super weird that people were like like I was only handing out hats to the people like yeah who were like it have to we're at it were eighteen like the the green hat that you had to be on the eighteen and you'd be good. um but it it was it was cool because like it was like um later on when I started making more hats people wanted to buy and then they would be like like oh don't worry I, I won't wear it yet till <laughs> until I earn it I make a run I'm like yeah. oh, don't worry like <laughs> just rock the collars you know it was it was like all about the movement you know. Um, so yeah, like I never really, I'm super passionate about merchandise and making shirts and stuff. Like it's just for me, <laughs> I don't want to say this out loud on the camera, but like, cause my wife will probably see this, but like, I'm happy. Like if I just cover my costs and I can just pass shirts off to Lloyd's cause it's like, yeah, you know, like that's, that's what it's about. The community, the stoke and, well, and making money off of merch is really, really difficult. Yeah. But I, I think where where the opportunity exists with Voyager is, like, on where we're going. That's what I mean. So, like, for me, I mean, because it's always been for for years now, probably since we've been slamming out Keiko's runs, it's how, Kayla, how do I get my buddy into this? 
Yeah. Okay, like, where do we start? Okay, like, okay, well, let's get proficient in the surf. You got you to gotta catch and connect two waves. Okay, yeah. now we're going to learn how to jump off the rocks. Okay, go, okay. Maintain yourself, breathe, focus, don't get lost, you know, like, don't get anxious or anything. You go. And they're like, okay, how are we going to read the bumps? You know, like, so it was cool because for several years now, we've been ironing out the process indirectly. And, you know, a few months ago or maybe six months ago, he came to me and was thinking about doing camps. And I was just like, bing, 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 bing. Like, like, this is it. This is my, this is my passion. This is what I feel like what we're how we're going to push the sport forward because it's always been about that. Yeah. It's about trying to grow the sport, keep the movement alive and keep the movement like just like enthusiastic. Yeah. You know? And yeah. so this is it, man. This is like, I'm stoked for the camps and it's been super fun putting our heads together, um, articulating a curriculum, articulating all the logistics and, yeah. It's 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 awesome, you know. It's even for all the disciplines, for everybody, with prone, uh, SUP, um, foil drive, and how the foil drive can help encourage someone's progression. But it's going to be amazing. It's going to be fun, and it's going to be such an experience to put it all together for people. Yeah, I think like the the, the retreats that we're hosting and structured retreats are are one part of what we could potentially offer. Like, I think creating an online curriculum that allows people throughout the world to access it and get the same lessons. Granted, like, in person, it's always going to be better. But there's people that can't get to Hawaii or, or potentially couldn't afford a retreat, but they could, you know, watch some online videos and get a lot of lessons. I think another place where there might be an opportunity is, like, summertime where we just rent a voyager's house and and it's it's not instruction it's just like come um, come stay like like if you were to go to surf camp in the mental oh like what mr bennett is there yeah i don't know oh what do you, what do you like how he's like come come oh yeah me in uh in he, 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 yeah or bali yeah or yeah. it's not really instruction like yeah i'll give you some tips on i'm this is more like let's just go surf let's just go do now trips <laughs> and out know? and and like being able to have a place where downwinders from around the world could come and experience the the Mecca, you know, like it's pretty wild. Like I think that's a huge opportunity as well. It's a lot it would be a lot le- more cost effective as well. Um so I'd love to see that. Jesse put that in my ear yesterday. He's like, Why don't you guys just like just don't do instruction. Just just <laughs> just make a house and let people a rain uh, house, void house, yeah. Get a chef and like you yeah. know, like have people come I like that idea too. Mm-hmm. It's like a surf trip. Yeah. Because we've learned that a lot of these downwinders, they're not even, some of them aren't even surfers. In our crew, there's some guys that don't even surf. No. Right? They're just really downwinder. One guy. Yeah. I think he was a canoe paddler. So he he tasted the downwinding in it yeah. at a canoe. Didn't group, didn't surf at all. Yeah. So he literally learned how to surf on a four foot prone foil board. Yeah. Fascinated. Yeah. You know, even Nick Herrera didn't surf. Nick Kapulin, freaking quarterback. Yeah. This guy is like super athletic, has a Hawaii State record for most yards in the game, graduated and just got into surfing and foiling. And yeah. probably he's like top three in races, you know. The teachers loved it. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but um Yeah, so talking about like the instruction, I just gotta say, bro, big shout out to uh James Casey from Australia because it's been like such a challenge for me to kind of like com- Compartmentalize it all into bite-sized people, bite-sized pieces for people to kind of take off and chew and learn and progress. Um, and it's been a challenge, but like this guy's been doing it for several years, and it's it's it takes a special brain for sure to like yeah. put it all. But I, I'm stoked. I think I think for us, it's just yeah, like you said, it's about the community. It's about the movement, being enthusiastic, yeah. and everything, and um, being together. You know, because for us, that's always been the fun part. And I think that's what's unique about the Oahu crew is like, you know, we're jumping in the back of trucks together, all fired up, catching up on life, you know, like, you know, looking at everyone's different gears and setups and just, yeah. It's just learning from each other. So much of that. Yeah. And like in the beginning, all of us were so lost. And that's why 
you know, in the beginning, progression was somewhat slow because there was not, we were all learning it. Yep. And like now that we have all this knowledge, it gives opportunity for the people that are coming to the retreats to just fast forward through a lot of it and uh, allow their progression to happen that much quicker. Yeah. Yeah. I think, and, and you were talking about a little bit earlier about how some of the new gear um, that will be implemented in our camp, like the foil drive, like those Milo, like yeah. ocean walkie talkies, like, I'm super excited to see how people's learning curves will just be accelerate. Yeah. And those things, you know? Yeah. Cause like when I've been teaching people from my boat and you're trying to remember the yell at them. Yeah. These Milo things, thanks to Milo, like they, they just more or less will go on the PFD yeah. and we get to talk and say, Hey, this bump in front of you, go on this, the one, go left, go left. Okay. Right. It's, it's. You're you're you need to kick out. Stop I'm kick kick out. Yeah. yeah. Relax. Breathe through your nose. You know, like we're gonna be able to just deliver instructions so much easier to you. Uh, and then just uh, I almost feel like too is like I've when I've taken friends before and I'm on the ski and I'm like yelling at them, it it's almost I'm yelling because I want it to be loud and they can hear it. Cause it's you know, it's like when you're out there you're just kind of like zoning in, but then you hear yeah. hear something, you're like, ah and it can be like yeah. frantic. You know, um, and it it comes from a place of just so they can hear it, but not like I'm snapping. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, in a bad way. Yeah, but um, yeah, I'm stoked to 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 be implementing this. Yeah. Um, the foil drive, you know, like it's funny. Like I I always like just inside joke dogging Eric Sturman all the time about his foil drive guy. Yeah. Because but I'm actually coming around and seeing how it can be such a good tool. You know, like for the prone, for the SUP, yeah, and just giving people reps. It's all about reps, you know. Um, so like for us, our repetition was three hours out in Mono Lua Bay. Yeah, nobody should be able to. No one should deserves or sh- would ever want to go through that. Yeah, we don't recommend it at all. You're talking about having to paddle. Yeah, all the, yeah, paddle. Be out there for three hours, failing. Yeah. Kind of getting worried, like, yeah. oh, I got a meeting at two. I don't know if I That's make. Not... Where do I come in? You know, like I don't have water. My phone's kind of wet. I like this is it. This is sick. Like, <laughs> ah, you know. But like, if you have a tool like a foil drive, yeah, you can get maybe just as much or more repetition without being in like grave danger and like that. Yeah. You know, um, coming in in the dark, coming in and just moving for you. That was at us, by the way. Yeah. But uh, you know, like a lot of that could be avoided with tools like coil drive. Like they just sent me a setup and I've been absolutely loving it. It's, yeah. it's, yeah. I was afraid I was going to like it, but I love it. I'm like, I guess I did it this morning. Like it was super fun. It just takes a little bit getting used to. Um, but it's, it's still not going to be as good as like when you're on a wave, a regular board, mm. you know, like you've got the weight transitions are a little slower, but you're being able to pick off the best wave of the set every time. Rather than just surviving. And, yeah. Oh, I'm dead. I, yeah. Take this little. When I, what, I, what I've noticed is like pumping wise though, once I get it in the right sweet spot, maybe the pumping's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Pump yeah. Just as long, long. Maybe not as long. Well, at, I think down far. I think, like I said, it's, it's about repetition and quality of reps that we get. Yeah. So like, you know, with the foil drive, it's, you're getting quality reps more and so it you're just ironing it all out wow. getting it better and that's how that's how you get better yeah right? i would highly encourage like people that are like on the fence about foil drive or potentially coming to a retreat you gotta try it to to just do it try it you know like it's we've got the best instructors you got paul cooper you got josh Coob. those two guys are like the best guys here well right drive yeah and then by the time the camp comes around, you know, Jack just got one. You, are you, you got one yet? No, but well, you're right, you're right. I try it. Cause he needs mine. Um, but I'll be caught up on it. Jack will be caught up on it. So from a foil drive standpoint, we're going to be very strong, yeah. um, in that component of being able to get people to utilize the foil drive, to get into bombs, to catch the bombs and ride with the foil drive out of the water. Okay, good quality rems. Yeah. You know, because I think, like I said, at the end of the day, the downwinding is the pinnacle. Yeah. But downwinding with minimal gear, like whether it's the wing or the four-wheel drive, like 
everyone deserves to taste and feel and dial in in that manner. It's cheers. Yeah, you know, just to be able to dial in in the bumps with no foil drive and no wing and just be totally free, it's pretty liberating. Yeah. But utilizing tools. Awesome, man. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm stoked to see the sport grow and take off, you know, like just even from racing season. Yeah. Two years ago when we did Maui to Molokai, there were six of us, Jack, myself, Kane, Eric Sturman, Annie Starr, and maybe Nick Apule. I can't remember. There's one other person. Oh, Julian. He was from Australia. I mean, next year, the one that you did it was, um, Maybe about 30 or 40 of us. Yeah. And then this year, there's sold out within an hour, and there was already over 100 participants. Yeah. And people on the waiting list. Yeah. So I'm loving seeing this, the growth and the growth trend in this yeah. explosive yeah. manner. Um, and it's, it's awesome. And you can just look how, like, you know, like last year when you did Maui to Molothai, yeah. like how much more knowledge and experience you gain just in a short time. Yeah. One year. That felt like decades ago, Pat. Yeah. You know what I mean? For as far as skill level and like what we've done and yeah. what we've been doing. Yeah. So it's, you know, whether it's racing or just or do gear. Gear. I'll all be using the exact same gear. Like. Same gear. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just maybe you're, you're more efficient. Yeah. You know, you're enjoying it. Yeah. You know, and I think, you know, as I was even like, um, putting the curriculum together, you know, as like one sector downwinding seems, I was thinking about there's so much different ways to downwind in a sense, like, right. There's racing, right. It's, it's not fun. It, the only thing about fun about racing is competition and going as fast as you can, but you're gambling with trying to go with the smallest wing possible. And you're like, you're always thinking about gear selection and the conditions, right. When we're out there with the friends, it's about kind of going fast, but then if you see a section, you do a turn, you know, it's, it's like that. And then there's sometimes when you go by yourself and it's just, you show up to like a world uh, skate park and there's nobody there and you're just, just flowing and heading and it's just, there's that, you know. And then there's like, there's people who just, they just love ride and glide. Yeah. So they 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 just want to get out there, immerse themselves in the ocean, work as like least as possible, and just stand there, lock their legs, yeah. and link and glide. Yeah. You know, and this it, it's cool to see how that version yeah. is. Yeah. And I'm, I'm uh, the only person I want to race is Jess. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. Uh, you got the record on it right now. No. No. I. Uh. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that dude's way more faster than me. I think I got lucky that one time. Really? <laughs> well, it's been, it's been, it's fun, bro. There's always like, you know. Um, he got me yesterday too. He got a better barrel than me. Really? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh man. Yeah. Such a guy, yeah. <laughs> Gone over method, but he's going to be out for a little bit. He's having a, he's having a kid. And yeah. Welcome to our club. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to try and jump. Everybody can surf and foil whenever you like. You can go fish and go down yeah. and, and. And hey, maybe he's gonna get rid of that Corolla, you know. Yeah, I doubt it. It's time to step up, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, but from safety as well, because I know like look, day one, a lot of it is all about safety, right? Yeah, hundred percent. And getting people to understand how important it is to have the right gear. Um, like first, a shout out to by Kobe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. by Kobe of the sub of four vests, just to make sure everybody's safe. Like. We're going to be requiring people to wear vests. Leashes. Leashes. Oh, tell me a leash story. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Let's see, though. Okay. You know, we fly with Jack. We feel invincible. You know, yeah. we're, we're the, we are the uh, the leaders. Yeah. And uh, A team. The A team. And this is what's beautiful about the sport is whenever you think you're high, it's time to get back to earth and get humbled. We have a saying, it's humble pie, yeah. you know, and this was, this was a big serving of humble pie. Yeah. I think, yeah, so back then, we would actually have to time our, when we would go, 
because we didn't want to go on a dropping tide or a low tide because there would be a current um, with those conditions. And at the time, we were riding boards that were 60, liters. That's what I was on. And so, like, you couldn't really overcome the speed of the current to match the speed of the bump that you wanted to go on to pull up. So I was having a shocker. I think everyone was up and gone. And I was probably 20 minutes, 30 minutes deep without popping up or getting close and trying. And um, Kahi had maybe was just baptizing himself in, this, in the sup world. He was going all for the ride. And, you know, hopefully we'd hear from him a few hours later. Like, oh, Kahi, where you stay? <laughs> you know, like, in the day. <laughs> I'm okay. Um, so we all jump off together. I'm having a shocker. I can't get up and I don't have a leash, but I have everything. I have a water pack. I have my phone and everything, music going. And um, one bump. And I've always been like, ah, nah, you know, like I've, I've been falling a lot. Like whenever you fall, the thing spins and it like turns back right up to you. You don't need leash, <laughs> you know. Um, Just in general, too, like when I surf, I don't wear a leash just because I'm like, yeah, it's good exercise to swim, you know, like. So that, that's always been my mantra. But um, lost my board. It spun around. It spun around, but then a bump caught it. Boom! And straightened it out. And um, it went from being within an arm's reach away, like swim. I'd be like t- be touching the tail of it, and I and then it like went to like a foot beyond of arm's reach, and then ten feet, and then like. 30 feet, and then, like, my mind is just flashing. Bro, I just lost $3,000 worth of gear, but this time to survive. I look in at shore, I'm like, that's going to be, like, a probably a two-hour swim. Like, okay, like, I, like, stop wasting your energy. It's survival mode now. Like, boom, gone. And then I, it was, I couldn't keep up. I was, like, long sleeve, water pack, everything. And I was just like, all right. Oh, this is gonna be gnarly. So shame, right? Because I'm with the Voyagers, you know. And um, Kai was just popping up, and he was struggling. Yeah, he hadn't gotten up yet, and he saved my life, bro. <laughs> that was wild, bro. Um, you so always wear like, a leash. Safety is important. The most scared I've ever seen you. It was. Uh, I wasn't scared. I was just just this stoic face, strong. like like you had just seen a, a like you just seen something that just had you shocked i was and that, really rattled and shocked don't worry you stay here i'll go get your board yeah <laughs> dude is wild so i mean like what's the lesson there equipment right yeah. so like safety repetitions right it took us a long time to get that iron out safety equipment and now we're continuing to learn with equipment with all the uh you know brands just Continuing their progression of high aspect wings, making it stiff and making it better with, you know, the companies that I ride for and you ride for just coming out with new gear. And I think that's what keeps us, you know, like stoked. Like I'm, yeah. I'm, we're four or five years deep in dominating now and I'm as stoked or more stoked than I am now than when I started. Yeah. You know? Yeah. With downwinding and foiling for, for me, like... I've now reached a point. I remember like in the very beginning, the transition back to shoreboarding was really, really difficult. But now like I can go back to shoreboarding in from one wave to the other. Have you been able to experience that same like ability to transition or do you have a hard time transitioning between shoreboarding and, and foiling? So I just surfed yesterday. Yeah. First time in six months. So shark. Yeah, going for it. My son, this is my this is my sales pitch to for people getting into filming. People are scared. Like, so my short board is like, oh, I don't want to ruin my surfing. So, my whole thing is, I grew up on the South Shore right here. Um, we only get waves in the summertime. Yeah. Um, for me, I have a whole summer out of. I would probably have, like, be stoked to paddle out my short board. Maybe like six times because the waves are popping. Yeah. Out of those six sessions, maybe three or four of the waves were completely memorable. Either a really good barrel or like a sick turn hitting fizz out the back. Like, 
yeah, you know, like out of those moments or those high high memory moments, your writing time is maybe maxing out at fifty to twenty five seconds. So when I started foiling, it was more about like, dude, like there's so much more writing time. Yeah. Um, you know, like it's way more time efficient now that we have kids. Like I could foil for 30 minutes and be completely like satisfied and content. Um, and then now, like, as you just mentioned, like, I don't need to surf. I will go to surf when the surf is three to four foot Hawaiian and it's short boardable, like. And I would want a paddle out snowboard. Anything underneath, I like. I was just foil. Yeah, you know. But I get out there, and everything is so tuned up and sharp for surfing, right? Like I'm not afraid of speed because I go five times as fast. Like you know, like when I'm, I'm talking about speed into a turn, because sometimes yeah. you're like, ooh, I kind of like slow down so I get hit. Yeah. You know. Whereas now, like where I'm on a, I'm connected to the water. I'm not three feet above the surface and like thinking I'm going to slide out or it's going to be weird. I'm not dealing with pitch, you know, I'm connected to the water. So you send it harder. Your legs are stronger. Your flow is better. Your um, sensitivity to speed is so much more like in tune. Um, And when we're foiling in 30 minutes of us foiling, we're probably have done 75 to a hundred turns. Yeah. So our muscle memory and our reps of getting in those S turn and those arcs stay crispy. So like I was surfing yesterday for the first time. And then like, you know, when we're foiling, we're paddling around a four foot board. Yeah. You know? So like, bro, I was thinking like, I haven't surfed in six months. I made it out to the lab. No problem. Yeah. My legs are strong. The way that I was able to read the wave was so much better. Yeah. Cranking turns. And I was like, Ooh, that was fun. Like it's kind of refreshing. Sure. Born is like almost going in slow motion like yeah the, the wave now it's moving the same speed but you're moving much slower so it's easier to like it's easier to read and predict and, yeah and feel and flow yeah so i i i think it's honestly if you I, want to improve your surfing get it yeah, foiling that's that's more or less the conclusion it's like you can become a better shortboarder yeah through foiling and it's so funny because i think initially like everyone is like like state of mind is like and then we foil it, kooks. Yeah. It's like, bro, like, anyone who's foiling, they've either been surfing their whole lives or they're the best surfer in the lineup at that moment. Yeah. They're just on a different craft, 3D surfing, yeah. you know? Yeah. But, like, it's it's funny because, yeah, like, it's just a modern, innovative take on surfing, and it makes your surfing better. Yeah. And kooking is, like, super healthy for you. I, humble pie, like, you know, all these different crafts that I've tried in my life, I've cooked a lot. And, like, I think it's made me a better all-around person to just have empathy for the books. Um, but then also see, like, stagnation in, in just doing the same thing over and over again and not wanting to just be stagnant. Yeah, keep moving. To me, that's what I love, and that's what I think a lot of people appreciate and love, the philosophy of downwinding. It's, yeah, like, we're adult males in our peak. You know, we've, you're in your peak. No, you're in your peak too. Right. Um, we should talk about that, though. Peak peak week? Well, oh. like, go finish your book. Finish what you're going to say. So what I'm saying is, I think it's very healthy for us confident males in our peak to constantly be reminded that there's more to, there's more to learn. And there's more to continue to learn. And... It's good to suck. And it's good to have shockers. It's good to eat some pie. Yeah. Um, it makes the reward that much better. It makes the reward a lot better. You instantly have love, appreciation, and respect for your next man. Yeah. Especially when you see him, like, Strug- you know, struggling. Yeah. And I think that's what makes foiling different is, you know, like, I think if you're surfing and you see this guy, you're not going to paddle up to him. You're like, hey, man, like, take off over here. Like, yeah. try to be lower, you know, like... Yeah. We're like, bro, burn that cooch. Burn that cooch. Get out of it. Beat it. <laughs> yeah. But in foiling, you, you know, like, to me, that's always been the thing. Is like, you go to a complete stranger, but, bro, what's your ID? Yeah. You know, like, oh, cool, bro. How is it? Yeah, awesome. And they're yeah. like, oh, bro, like, when you puff, like, try to keep the mask high. And, you know, it's just yeah. because 
you sucked and you were there to love, appreciate, and respect yeah. and just be, being a better human because you're constantly back on the bottom again. Yeah. You know, it's it's fun to see people climb and grow. Yeah. You know, for sure. But where are your peaks, bro? I'm, I'm over 10 years older than you. <laughs> I I would like to say I'm in my peak and I, I feel like 90% of myself is still in its peak. But at 45 years old, I've begun to have like issues with my own like physical abilities. Mm. Um, and some of my peers have as well. And then some of my elders, which is beautiful in this sport, is that we have elders like Jeff Chang. Yeah, and he probably even has elders. Like, you know, there's there's guys that are foiling in their 80s, right? And there's those guys that like seem to be in their primes in their 50s and 60s foiling. Dave they're, Lama. They're, they're beating us in races and they're like in their 50s and 60s. But one thing that I'm I'm trying to learn right now is how can we sustain our bodies and our health to be able to foil into our 60s and 70s. And I think at, at that at this age of 45, your body is now transitioning into the next phase of life. Like you're in your twenties to forty. You you're invincible, yeah. more or less. No pain. Maybe maybe a, a, a tired, uh, you know, a little bit. Um, but now at forty five, like wow, I get back pain or or whatnot. Um, and now I'm look, I'm going through right now through the journey of okay, how do we take these feelings that we're having that our brain are telling us our bodies are having and turn it around into a way that actually strengthens us instead of weakens us um so stick around on my journey to like figure out how i get through this because i'm i'm making progress but i'm questionable whether i could do holokai you know like, you know you're... i want to i want to do maui to molokai that's for sure but i really want to do molokai to oahu um, but they're three days that it, the, they're a day apart, more or less. Like, like Friday, we do M to M Saturday is a real spring or come well, if you wanted to call it up, I'll, I'll be resting most likely. Yeah, me too. And then the next day from Ilio all the way to Kaiwan is where we just added eight miles to the race, you know? So it's now what a, a third, 40 mile, race. 40 mile, 40 mile race. Uh, Tour de France style. Back. I don't even get nurse And for me, it's not a race. Like, no, I'm like, I will survive this thing. Yeah. And it's like, we've got two and a half months for me to mentally and physically to get to a point where my body will allow me to do it. Mm-hmm. You know? Uh, so, so I, no, I think this is great because now you're just in another place where, you know, like you're learning, you're acquiring new skills and knowledge, yeah. nutrition body function i think the more and more and more we downwind when it's, we don't you haven't peaked yet you know like the more you downwind you're gonna learn to become more efficient relax yourself connect bumps ride on longer using less energy know when to pump know when not to pump yeah. and just kind of like everything i think i've been starting to feel like aches and pains in my feet too just for yeah. like grabbing and right now you can just kind of like but like you know now you're aware of what's going on and you're you address it you maintain it and make sure that you can are you able to breathe through your nose the whole time or do you find yourself breathing through your mouth i'm pretty relaxed yeah but i think it's just the confidence of what i'm seeing and the confidence of what i'm feeling and how i go forward at keeping my heart rate low yeah. um and that's what to, to me that's my fascination it's not you know, like, and I was talking about this with Edo in uh, in our podcast. Is everyone has like a very distinct style on downwinding? Yeah, like Edo, he's a freak. He's a yeah. He pumps. He goes over bumps, and he just eats it. And he, but he can't because he's a, he's jacked. He's twenty years old in his prime. Yeah. You know, um, Kane is like a gear guy. Yeah. So he he dials in his gear for him to go as fast as he can. Andrew's a very strategic, methodical guy. Yeah. Very thought out, well thought out. He puts to a nice, clean race approach. And then for me, my whole thing is I don't 
really do any of those. But I'm, my fascination is going as fast as I can with using the least amount of energy. So my capacity is efficiency. So, but it's cool because as we get out into a racing platform, it's cool to see the different styles and and characteristics flow and blend in a race. Um, a Hawaii Chiron race is now, in my opinion, characterized as a sprint. Whereas in Molokai, it's cool. It'll be like seeing like the rabbit versus the hare or just like, you know, the um, a Shaolin monk fighting a, a crusader. <laughs> you know, it's just like, it's yeah. it's cool to see how it's all going to play out. Yeah. And not not to say that competition is the most important thing, but like there's various styles. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely don't doubt it for competition. It, for me, it's like unless it's med- Jesse, and it's, unless it's Jesse. <laughs> but it's more like meditation, and it's that ability to disconnect your brain from tapping into flow state. Yeah, yeah, it's like tapping into the flow state. It's just a, a way to just let go and feel the energy, and and then it's the camaraderie. You know, the the hanging out with your boys and 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 girl. We mm-hmm. need more girls in the sport. Girls. The, uh, they're they're capable 100 100 percent yeah we got one female in the cap which is which is exciting yeah um we'd love Even more yeah we'd love to have more like i want to reiterate like that we we've got foil drives to use like foil drive has hooked up our ability to utilize these tools to help people get into downwinding um and so it's gonna be if you can foil like you gotta at least be able to foil at this point, right? You gotta be able to foil and pump out, catch another wave. You yeah. And um there's basically two like things that are happening. It's either they're well like skilled enough to activate themselves on the foil. So now we could begin our downwind instruction. Yeah. Or maybe they're brand, brand new. So like, ooh, okay, like, well, we need to make sure that you can activate yourself on the foil. Yeah. Whether that's like doing a step off off the jet ski or paddling up, right? And before we get into downwind, we can't even get into downwind if we can't yeah. activate on the foil. Yeah. So I love the foil drive for that because it's going to activate everybody on the foil so they can see you know, the 3D moving chessboard. Yeah. But um, we can do both. Yeah. Because eventually you want to be able to do it with how There's even the ability, like, where where we work in Mauna Lua Bay, like, you can utilize the foil drive in the flat water to get up, mm-hmm. you know, and then just go 100 yards and you're in the bump. Yeah. You know, so even... A lot of the challenges people have are once they're in the bumps, how do I use the foil drive? Well, in this case, you could arguably start in the flat and then go out to the bumps. You know, so there's lots of lots of exciting things to look forward to. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Where? Uh, what's next with foiling? Uh, like we, you know, I we've got we got the foil drive. We got Bennett's little jet whole, board. flight board, the jet board thing that gives you a couple of bursts. What's what do you think is going to happen next? I just, for me, I just still see it as there's so much more room for exploration around the world, where we can downwind, where we can fall, where we can travel to. You know, we've only scratched the surface. Yeah. Um, I think competition is going to grow. I think hopefully, you know, like we can get Maddie involved in some cycle live streams that, um, capture our sport and show the world how amazing it is. I'm convinced it's one of the best uh, ocean sports out there. Um, you know, and we're just laying the groundwork for yeah. the, for the future generations. Yeah. We need to figure out how to bring the sport to the mainstream so more people can understand what it is and see what it is mm-hmm. and get involved. Keeps you healthy. There's so much room out there in the ocean. Oh yeah, the run just turned on, like we now doable today. Time to put the shoreboards away. Yeah, bust. I got, I got mine in. I'm ready. I'm ready to dial in again, and I'm looking forward to it. Five years deep, and I'm like, when's the next wind puff that we can go out there and get some? Yeah, well, let's hear it. But I, you know, I think we're 
it's still climbing. Yeah. You know, um, gear is going to always get better. Skill levels are always going to get better. We're going to try and find the next Everest or whatever that may be. Um, it, you know, I think the styles, like I was going over the different styles of downwinding that people have, like, for example, that guy McFloey, like, when you see his clips, you can just guarantee. This guy flying and speedy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and then, you know, like the things that I miss is like seeing clips of Scotty where he's just like flowing. Yeah. And he's doing the full like 30 second skate park run. Yeah. And be like, Wow, that was a well. He's gonna be here. Yeah, he's gonna be here. We got we got Scotty's gonna do a week or two of, of instruction. We got Kane. We got Andrew. We got Edo. We got Jack. We got you. Yeah, like we got the best guys around. Gabby's gonna come too. Probably yeah. our instructor. Looking forward for the sport. For me, I think there's gonna be more assist type technologies that that come out maybe that's integrated into the mast or or um better battery technology like the one thing right now I, I would say is like the batteries are pretty heavy and they're big um and with time those are get those will get smaller um but take away the whole assist thing i think what we're gonna see is just more people getting involved in the sport altogether um mm -hmm. it's it's just we've seen it it's happening. Um, more and more people are getting into it. I remember, you know, on a windy day of driving at, um, you know, up Diamond Head, and you could tell from a mile away, like, that's Kai, because you could yeah. see his style. Yeah. Or, like, you would you would see people driving up in a truck, and you'd be like, oh, that's Jack, Adam, and Nick Apula. Yeah. You know, like, you, you could just see it. Now it's like on any windy day you're driving, you're yeah. seeing trucks go and you're seeing people come down. Who are these people? Yeah. yeah. Not in like a, who are these guys? But just like, this is it. It's, it's like, this is awesome. Yeah. Look, 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 look at the growth in the, this is an momentum. Yeah. That's, that's a beautiful day. I hope it, I hope it stays that way. And I hope that people continue to give us rides up. And, yeah. And I, and, and then there's also just like, Hey, we also need to continue to educate the group as as it gets built like you got to give right you know you got to make it you have to make sure you stay yeah, out of your line out earn your strength you know, yeah you got to be you you got to share what you learned with other people and you know it's none, none of this gatekeeping like let's yeah let's open up the sport again um and that's that's the whole reason we we're doing these these cats and hopefully it evolves into like hey every summer there's a voyager house like book a book a week, bring your friends. Book a week, bring the family. You know, bring the family. Bring the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, awesome, bro. Right on. Good chat. Yeah. Love it, bro. Yeah. Great chat. There's yeah. thanks to Maddie. Thanks, Maddie. Maddie. Love you, buddy. Mental Vicky. Like Maddie's like the whole reason that's that we've been able to put what we're doing out to the world. You know, Maddie's been Maddie's been very. Sick significant a very significant and influential part in pushing the sport forward now we should get Stop fucking jack bro let's get him on the podcast <laughs> <laughs> and the foil for sure yeah how about no. you do it since you're like the the keynote speaker for all those guys bro rolling <laughs> bro what you got in there what you drinking bro so we we have to more or less send a huge shout out to the brands that have supported us so far um, you know, there's the foil brands so far that have, have committed. We've got Lyft that's going to be helping us out with foils. Um, F1 as well. From boards, we've got Robin Johnston, um, Glenn Kalama, Pang. Glenn, uh, Pang. Glenn Pang from Magic. And, uh, uh, you know, from from actual companies, you know, we mentioned Milo in the podcast by Coke. But then also LMNT was hydrated. Um, I sent them a request and they let me they were going to send like 36 packs and i was like hey we'll go through that in like a day, day. <laughs> and they're like oh no worries and they ended up sending me i don't know Box. 500 yeah so we'll be well hydrated, hydrated. Um, at these camps so there's still lots of opportunity for other brands to get involved uh, 
our camps are this June, all of June 2024. So hit us up, uh, hit up Simeon. What's your email? <laughs> What's your email? VoyagerFoiler808 at gmail.com. That's the only line. <laughs> Voyager Foiler 808 at gmail dot way easier. It's way easier. Yeah. We'd love support um, from any brands that want to, you know, help these foilers on their journey and help support us as we grow the sport. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't remember if it was Voyager Foiler at gmail.com or Voyager Foiler 808. I was like, I'm not giving out my personal email.